All right, this week we're going to dive into extending vanilla Python. Uh, for our lesson, my name is Professor Trepkowski, and let's go ahead and get started. So what do I mean by extending Python? It refers to the process of adding new functionality to the language. We're going to do this in a couple different ways, and there's many more, but here's the high level. So we're going to create a custom module or package. We can create our own uh, interfacing with uh, external libraries or systems. And we're going to, or we can develop custom data types and classes. And each one of these points will has uh, benefits and minuses to do that, and it all determined based on your workflow of what you're doing. So the key benefit of extending Python is tailored functions. Uh, these create this Python code that perfectly aligns with your specific requirement in solving problems that might not be exist, uh, addressed with existing libraries. Uh, you can you extend Python because of, you need to optimize some performance. Maybe uh, the process that you're currently doing something with is computationally intensive, and you want to go ahead and create a Python package that was created using C++, and you wrapped it in Python, so it runs more efficiently. Or maybe you have a process where your data is in format A, and you have to do some interoperability and convert it into uh, data set B. This is uh, called interoperability, and it expands the capabilities of what you're doing and allows you to create versatile tools for various applications that you're dealing with. So maybe you're writing a function that takes KML and converts it into a, um, converts it into a feature class. So that's a GIS example. Or maybe you have a database and you need to have it talk to another database that it doesn't namely, natively know how to communicate to. You can do customization and you can have full control over the behavior of your custom code and fine tune it as you need. And then there's also code reusability. So you can create small pieces and functions that can be reused through your entire package and it'll promote efficient development and uh, pack, uh, practices and reduces redundancy. So let's say you have a function that does something simple. Uh, maybe it counts the letters in a sentence for the different types, and you have to use that in multiple places. Well, you wouldn't want to write the logic 15 times, because what if you make a mistake? Then you got to update it 15 times. You can create a method, have it do it once, and you can go ahead and uh, fix it that one time and reuse it as many times as you needed. So uh, I touched briefly on some use cases, but here's a few more. So com uh, use cases for um, extending Python or scientific computing. So you can use libraries like NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, basically to accelerate uh, data visualization and uh, calculations. A lot of that's done because uh, the underlying framework is actually written in C and just wrapped in Python. We have web development. Yes, Python can be used as a web development tool. You can use things like Django, Flask, and FastAPI to create custom web applications and um, services. Machine learning, so you can use things like TensorFlow and PyTorch to extend and um, and develop custom machine learning models. You can do game development. Um, you you know you can use game engines like Pygame to create interactive games, and you can do data analysis with libraries like Pandas and Plotly to expand specialized data analysis tasks um, for the ArcGIS library. So let's take a look at some stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about index and slicing. So when you have a list or an array object, uh, it starts at zero. I know um, you're probably familiar with that. And arrays can be queried with negative or positive values. So if you want to get the last object in an uh, array, you can put in negative one. Or uh, if it's the positive direction, you can start at one and go to the length n minus one, because you have to remember you start at zero, not one. So let's take a look at an example. Let's in here we have a list. It's one through six, and we want to get the last value. So we can show that the negative one value is actually the last value six in the same one, and it'll print true. So with slicing, uh, we can chop up arrays, giving uh, by giving a start stop value like a pie or a cake. And the syntax is array object open bracket your start value as an integer, your stop value as an integer or step. Um, start is always required and stop and step uh, are optional so our start is where you want it to take from 
and the stop is the end index position. Step is how big you want to take. The default is always one. And um, yeah, I, actually, if you don't want to provide the start value, I misspoke before, you can just put a, uh, a uh, colon in that value and I'll just assume it's the zero spot or the first spot. So let's go ahead and take a look at a slice here. We're gonna start at position one and then we're gonna to go to four and we're gonna take steps two and it'll print two and four, but it'll not print six because it's not inclusive. We can create custom sequences. Uh, so let's say we wanna make a custom slicing function or indexing and these we can do that by extending what are called magic methods. And magic methods are reserve methods surrounded by double underscores or thunders. Um, these, these, aren't, um, these can be overridden and you shouldn't override those functions without their intended purposes. So you shouldn't make a custom function called get items that doesn't go ahead and look up the index within uh, a given list. So only using what they're, they're uh, intended for. So we can go ahead and create a custom sequence. We have to create a class and we have to Im implement the length thunder and then implement the get items thunder. And here it is. Uh, I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio's code so it's a little easier to read. So here we have our custom sequence. Here we're going to define our storage variable on the class or class variable and then we're going to have our initializer uh, we're just going to use the star values which implies a list and we're going to call uh, inherit from sequence and then set our list value we're going to define our two methods a length and our get items so here with our length we do def dunder uh, len we return our integer value, so we just use the built-in for our value, and then we can call our, uh, we can do get items, and we can return um, the value that we want to get. If we go ahead and run this, we can see that we get back six when we get back, when we take our first item within our custom sequence. So let's go back. The next thing we want to talk about are content man, uh, context managers, and they're considered one of the most useful features within Python. Context managers allow us to implement, uh, to implement a context uh, controller, so you can implement an enter and exit. So what's going to happen to a certain process when you enter it, and what's going to happen when you leave? So you can automatically clean up some um, some functionality or some uh, connection. So we'll think of a database connection that you need to close. Uh, there's a built-in context lib module where you can leverage the content manager generator function if you don't want to do this all yourself. And a context manager allows users to control the setup and teardown phase of a code block. Uh, another example of using this is opening and closing a file. So you can use the open function, but you got to remember at the end to call dot close. Uh, but you can also use an open function in um, in Python and have it done within a with statement that'll automatically call those enter and exit with your code block. Let's take a closer look. So uh, here's an example. We have to process some file. So we're going to pass in a file name. It's a string. We're going to call open. So now we're reading the file. We're going to call our process file and then do a finally and then call the close. But there's a lot of steps here that we have to do. So Really, all I want to worry about is passing in this file name and processing it. So I can simplify this code by using a with statement. So I can just focus on the one piece of information that I need to do here, and that's the process file. Using a with statement, do with open in our file name, and I declare it as a variable as fd. I pass that into my process file. It does its work, and then it automatically closes it when it's done. So uh, another thing I want to just to reiterate are the conventions with underscores. Uh, there are underscore conventions in Python. A variable with no underscores is considered public and be called by anyone. Variables with one or more underscores, like underscore variable one here, are considered private and should never be called by the users. 
The next thing we need to talk about for coding conventions, especially when we're extending Python, is properties. There are three different types. There's get, set, and delete. Uh, the most common ones they'll probably use are get and set. So um, here we have a get in here. So we have our class person with our initializer, the age, and we're going to return the age back. So the purpose of the get is to retrieve a var variable of an attribute. The syntax is the at property on the method. And here's the example. So property, at property, um, def age self, return age. And then for our setter, we can do our, our the purpose is to set a value of an attribute with valid, and you can often do it with validation or modification. And what it is, it's the name of the property, in this case, age dot setter. And then the method signature has to be uh, def name, self, and then comma and value. And here we can do, uh, we have an if statement that checks if the value is less than zero and it raises a value error, says age can't be negative. And if that passes, then we set it back to our age variable. And then the delete property allows us to uh, specify custom action or validation before or after an attribute is deleted. It works the same way like the setter, you do um, at attribute.deleter, the decorator uh, before the method. And let's go ahead and take a look at a full example. So I showed before the, the getter and setter with the at properties and the at age.setter. On the very bottom, you can see at age.deleter, and then you can do del age, and then just do a little print that says it's deleted. So we can extend this. So think of uh, ways of dealing with coordinates. Let's say we have a class called coordinates, and we want to pass in our Latin long as floats or integers. So we can set our initializer lat long float and set them to two private variables of latitude and longitude. Now that they're set, we can do getters. Here we have a get for latitude where it says it returns a float and an int, and it returns back that private latitude function. And then if we need to update it, we can do our check. So we can check our range from negative 90 to 90. Uh, if it's not, if it's uh, outside that range, we raise a value. Else we're going to go ahead and set it on the value. And that's our lesson for this week. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out via email or on the chat board on Canvas. Thank you.